the essential question we want to focus on for the whole part of D2 is the idea of your nerves and your hormones control digestion. So just nerves, hormones, and those are all things we talked about before. So just think nerves, hormones, controlling the digestive process. And in terms of this nature of science, a uh, very fascinating uh, case happened in 1822. A guy accidentally shot himself through the stomach uh, right beneath the... Uh, he was right beneath his stomach in the small intestine, and he recovered. Usually, you would die uh, back at this time, but he recovered, and this doctor actually kept him in his house for 10 years and had him do chores and things around the house uh, and studied what was going coming out of, his, uh, of that little hole that was left from the gunshot wound. Uh, so there are all sorts of... Uh, interesting things he noticed one was that the stomach acid the stomach uh, fluid was not very acidic until food would arrive and just the the collection of bile and it was a, it's a very tricky thing because um, the person that, that shot himself uh, couldn't uh, read, and he was basically held captive, is what most people kind of assume now, uh, for 10 years until he was allowed to leave. So, so definitely ethically problematic. And what we problematic, what we think about mostly in terms of you know experimenting on people is there needs to be informed consent. So, can you have informed consent when the person can't read or sign a contract as the person who shot himself did? Or they basically couldn't work anymore, so he was kind of in a bind as to what to do, and this doctor offered to you know, provide you know, housing, food for him in exchange for working and this experimentation. So, how free was that person to... Uh, to give in or allow this doctor to research on it, should the doctor have done it. So very gray area and things, you know, considerations were different. A lot of things, we talked about this, a lot of experimentation were done a long time ago, pretty unethically, unethically. So here we have uh, the vagal center, the vagus nerve. We talked about that before, controlling digestion. Um, uh, the, the your parasympathetic nervous system uh, controlling pepsin and acid production pepsin and acid production and the gastric phase uh, basically um, a local reflex meaning once food hits it boom you release more gastric juice you also have the vagal reflex or that vagal vagus stimulation um, of your goes to your brain and then that in turn releases more juice and then you have gastrin histamine so these are the hormones kicking in and uh, down here intestinal, I'll have to write it over here because of my the, the video there. Um, but we have also, when we get down in the intestinal tract, there's nervous stimulation as well as hormonal. So you can see the brain controlling uh, what goes on in the stomach, but also the, there's local control releasing these juices. And that's what that doctor was collecting from that poor guy who shot himself. Uh, here we have, oh, gastrin. We've talked about that. Secretin and CCK. Uh, then gastrin and CCK, CCK uh, help down or stimulate the, the, the small intestine. But just to remind yourself of the basic parts, of course, the liver, 
got your stomach. And remember, you need to be able to uh, recognize these, label them potentially on the exam. Gallbladder collecting the bile. You should all recognize the pancreas as well. Basically, just controlling those um, those uh, the hormones or the uh, the, the secretions that help in digestion. Um, so we've talked endocrine glands have come up. Those are things like uh, your testes, ovaries. Uh, the thyroid gland uh, that the release hormones right into the bloodstream and these exocrine glands actually release the hormone into a tube that then goes a certain distance and then releases the hormone where it needs to go so examples of those would be salivary glands um, the pancreas actually is works as both the uh, exocrine and endocrine gland but in this case for digestion these goblet cells release digestive juices and uh, sweat glands are included sweat glands and uh, sebaceous Uh, that's what we were talking about on the video causes uh, people's later on get clogged up so make sure you fill out this chart uh, saliva remember has the hormones there mucus lysozyme helps to kill off things uh, ranin HCL pepsin are your main enzymes in your acid in your stomach and uh, you got water, carboxypeptidase, amylase, trypsin, and your pancreatic juice. So go and pause that if you want to take some time to write that down. Okay, so this is kind of a cool diagram showing this pit in your stomach, on uh, the, the walls of your stomach where all these cool uh, juices are created. So this right here is your surface mucosal cells. Mucosal cells and uh, mucosal uh, we got mucus coming up from here uh, hydrochloric acid transit factor interesting that's a special protein that helps you uh, absorb b12 vitamin later on very cool pepsinogen gas juice um, and then we have these G cells G cells at the bottom here and they make gastrin so that's terrible Henry gastrin hopefully you can read that um, and these are just uh, gastric glands that I just described so you got these pits and that's where all those juices come from so the hydrochloric acid and the protein will denature it. They will denature, change the shape. Changes the shape and then it can't work. Uh, hydrochloric uh, acid and pepsinogen turns the pepsinogen into pepsin. And then that will then break down the polypeptide chains and the smaller polypeptides. And one nice thing that strong hydrochloric acid do is it kills pathogens. So they can't get you. So this is, oh yeah, uh, pepsinogen was first made it's inactive. It has this little protein piece that's blocking the active site. So this protein polypeptide, poly, peptide can't enter and then of course it can't get broken down by that enzyme but the hydrochloric acid acts on this little piece breaks it off and then as you can see here it goes in there enters it and chomp 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 
can digest it. So here's a close-up of the villi, the epithelium. Of course, any epithelium is a surface. You can see electron micrograph here, these like little, little fingers uh, all stuck together. And basically, you are increasing the surface area. Look at all the surface area here, people. Big time surface area. So it's all about surface area uh, when it comes to our survival. Uh, we have, uh, in order for there to be a short path for diffusion, you want a single layer of cell, single cell layer. Remember, this is called epithelial cells, epithelial cells, and little tiny microvilli on the villi. That's how crazy it is. Um, lipids are absorbed by lacteals. See, that's this area inside, and that has a separate little system. It whisks um, those off right to the bloodstream. And... Uh, capillaries close to the surface to uh, the surface or the epithelium so they're right there they can capture them and uh, all this blood here I don't know I think it's like 15 20 percent of your blood when it gets pumped it goes to your intestine especially when you're eating so you can absorb that that's why if you eat and go exercise you can have some cramping issues because there's not enough blood to go around your digestive system cramps your muscles can cramp my in my experience my uh i get side aches real bad so here's close up the villi um not close ups but electron micrographs and uh, just in general, these cells that you see find here are called enterocytes. So enterocytes. Just the cells that are lining the small intestine. Fiber, I've mentioned fiber a lot. Uh, basically two types. This is soluble fiber. Um, this is insoluble. And if you remember what soluble means, it dissolves. And of course, this insoluble does not dissolve. So this insoluble, the soluble fiber is really good, especially because it gets into your blood and really helps to interact with cholesterol and other sorts of factors that affect uh, your cardiovascular health and reduce cardiovascular disease. Um, also soaks up water, speeds it along, slows absorption of sugar, so you don't get sugar spikes. And along with that side, you also get inside like the fruit skins, um, the the part of the plant on the outside that doesn't dissolve. Again, fills you up, reduces cancer risk. Uh, Hemorrhoids, you may have heard of those, are enlarged blood vessels right at the end of your digestive tract near the anus. And uh, all the pressure of constipation and uh, pushing stools that are very hard really stresses those out, stretches them out, and they can become enlarged and then stick out of the anus and become very itchy. And eating more fiber helps to prevent that so that should definitely get you eating an apple so more apples fewer hemorrhoids more apples equals fewer and you want fewer oh i forgot the h you want fewer hemorrhoids so eat your apples eat your vegetables eat those fruits so uh there's a, yeah, on page 67, I want you to draw this graph. You got digestible matter. So this would be low fiber up here. So it's all digestible. Here is high fiber down here. This is uh, less digestible. Only 10% digestible means mostly fiber. So you can see mean resident, this is mean residence time you have up here. 
in hours. You eat stuff that's highly digestible. It's going to stay in there a long time. Check this out. 60 hours. It's probably 70 hours in there. Uh, now this is about a day, two days, three days. Wow, you don't want your food in you that long. And if you kind of draw a line of best fit, you can see um, the more fiber you eat, uh, the less time it's going to stay in your gut. The more, the less fiber you eat, it's just going to be in there a long time, and that increases your risk of cancer, obesity, and hemorrhoids.